Present. Councilmember Holman. Present. Councilmember Hubach. Present. Councilmember Kellogg. Present. Councilmember Moorhead. Present. Councilmember Stevens. Present. Councilmember Westcote. Present. Mayor Kirkhoff. Present. We do have a quorum. Would everybody please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we do have a couple of uh, presentations uh, this evening, so I'd better come down there. And the first one is a proclamation. Whereas cancer is the number one disease killing children today, and whereas tens of thousands of children and teenagers worldwide will be diagnosed with cancer each year, and whereas the childhood cancer spares no one, affecting kids from every social economic background, and whereas the Optimist International Clubs, uh, such as the more peculiar Sunrise Optimist Club, prides itself on bringing the best out in kids, and is dedicated to ridding the world of childhood cancer. And whereas the first step in eliminating any disease is being aware of the situation, circumstances, and issues involved, therefore I, Peter Kirkhoff, Mayor of the City of Raymore, do hereby proclaim the month of June 2014 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Mike? Would you like to see um, Just real quickly, it's, it's great to be um, a pseudo leader, I guess, of, of the Optimist Club. I don't know if anyone can really lead that group. Um, but, but we're thankful to be involved with it. They've done a lot of great things for this community, and especially for childhood cancer. Um, thank you for your help. And the next one, Eric, if you'll step forward. There isn't a whole lot to read on this one. I don't have a lengthy thing, which means that you're going to have to talk for a little <laughs> bit. So, uh, This is being pre uh, presented to Eric Berlin in grateful appreciation for your service and leadership, the city of Raymore, 2003 to 2014. So, Rather than staying up here and say a bunch of good stuff, I'm just going to say I really enjoyed working with you in the years that I've been here. So, Congratulations. Thank you very much. And best wishes. Uh, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, very much. Uh, and I would just like to say thank you so much to all of the members of the governing body that I've worked with over the years for your uh, support and inspiration. I, I'm, I'm very happy to see Dale Jacobson's in the audience <laughs> tonight. Being appointed to the TIP Commission, Mr. Jacobson was one of those members that hired me. Uh, some 11 years ago to be uh, your uh, city administrator at the time and now city manager. I'd just like to thank all the members of the community that uh, make this community the wonderful place that it is. Uh, also would like to just give my great appreciation to the city staff, all the city staff members that I've worked with over the years. Uh, I know that you know uh, how dedicated they are to the city and how hard they work for you uh, each and every day. Uh, I will always uh, have very fond memories and thoughts of Raymore, and I'll be uh, watching you from afar, but not too far away from my new perch uh, north of the river. Thank you very much. We'll move on. Uh, there are no personal appearances this evening, so we'll move on to staff reports. Uh, Mr. Berlin. Uh, thank you, sir. I'll, on, I'll call on the uh, city clerk, Jeannie Warner. Thank you. Section 215.030, fireworks of the city code, requires fireworks vendors each year to obtain a permit for sale or display. The section further states that the permit shall be approved by the city clerk and that also each location will be inspected by the fire marshal and the code enforcement officer. Um, after inspection and approval, a fireworks permit will be issued to each location just like to announce that the sale of fireworks is from 10 a.m. June 28th to 10 p.m. July the 4th 
The discharge is 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. July the 1st through the 3rd, with 10 a.m. to midnight on July the 4th. This year, I've received eight applications for approval for areas throughout the city. The locations are listed in the staff report included in your council packets. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. I'll call on the Parks and Recreation Director, John Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Berlin. Good evening. Got a couple big things coming up this weekend. Uh, but before I get into that, I just wanted to make sure that everyone got this, uh, the new Raymore <laughs> Review, uh, full of fun-filled parks and recreation facts and a couple interesting stories, too. Um, this weekend, uh, we have our Walter Camp Anvil Fishing Derby, and that will be at Hawkridge Park. Starts at 10 a.m. Uh, we're expecting a big crowd. We've had a lot of inquiries already about the Fishing Derby this year. Uh, this is the second year at Hawkridge Park, so we're really excited to have it there. Following that, uh, we start the skateboard competition that will uh, be at, at Recreation Park at the skate park. Uh, again, uh, this is a, an event that's run by Dan Mapes. Uh, Dan's a former park board member, just does a terrific <coughs> job. He does a great job of getting both sponsors and the skaters from our area uh, excited about coming out to this event. Um, we have a big baseball tournament this weekend, rather large for us. Uh, one of the fields in Kansas City could not uh, handle this tournament, so they turned to us, and we, of course, said we would be happy to host it, so we're expecting a lot of teams and a lot of people in town this weekend. Um, and finally, uh, Arts in the Park, June 21st, uh, a new event for us. Uh, all the area artists that we've contacted, we've had pretty good response from so we're expecting a good crowd we have entertainment set up for the whole day uh, we have a kids area where they can come out and experience art and enjoy art uh, plus some, some concessions so hope to see you all out and that is June 21st at the farmers market park area and it's from 10 o'clock to 4 o'clock and finally farmers market tomorrow night and like the mayor says it's going to be 70 degrees <laughs> in perfect weather not like we're seeing this evening so uh, we had over almost 48 booths last week and great response from the community as far as people attending the event. Uh, we'll have entertainment again this week, so hope to see everybody out at the market. Any questions that anyone might have? Question for staff. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, John. I'll call on the Community Development Director, Jim Cataret. Thank you. Just one item. The uh, next meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission is uh, next Tuesday, June 17th. They will be considering uh, the final plan application for the third phase of the Meadowwood at the Good Ranch development. It's a proposed 30 lot uh, single family development uh, along the uh, along Dean Avenue uh, in the Good Ranch. So that's the only item on that agenda, the only item we have currently scheduled. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for staff? Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Uh, I'd like to call on Public Works Director Mike Kress. Thank you. Uh, the only item I have in addition to my written report is the uh, work on the uh, culvert rehabilitation on 58 Highway east of Jay was scheduled to start this week with the weather forecast. It's unlikely. Mayor, could you schedule some ribbon cuttings? Or I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can. <laughs> see, I, I believe my wife was responsible for the weather at the last ribbon cutting, so I'll ask her to do something. <laughs> But once it does get rolling, there will be uh, lane closures, so there will be flagmen out. The road will be remain open to traffic, but just ask folks to use uh, caution when they're traveling through there. Questions and staff? My report. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, I'd like to call on the Emergency Management Coordinator, Ryan Murdoch. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Berlin. Good evening. Um, I haven't met a lot of you personally. Um, Ryan Murdoch, the Emergency Management Coordinator. And I started for the city of Raymore January 13th. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a quick review of kind of what I'm up to um, and where our department is headed with the emergency management um, agency. Um, first off, we just completed the review of our local emergency operations plan. Um, we submitted that to Mr. Berlin, and then the state will be coming in to review our plan here sometime in the late summer. Um, and then upon approval, then we'll be getting a copy to all of you to approve as well. Um, Second thing is, um, we have recently been trying to expand our community emergency response team or our CERT team. Um, over the past about five months now, we've increased um, 
the attendees coming to our meetings from the high single digits um, to 15 to 18 members are now showing up at meetings. We recently had 15 um, complete certified first aid training at our May CERT meeting. Um, and we'll be holding a CPR class actually for our CERT members, as well as some members of the Missouri Militia um, who are going to be coming and joining our group as well. We've also incorporated the CERT members from Lake Winnebago um, and a few members from Peculiar who have asked to be coming to our CERT meeting since they don't have an established group um, at this time. So we're kind of trying to make it almost a Cass County CERT group at this point. Um, Harrisonville does kind of have their own thing, but we're trying to incorporate as many people that want to be involved in the group as possible. Um, one of the biggest things that I wanted to do when I was hired here was to get out to the community um, and do as much community outreach as we can to encourage people to um, have some sense of emergency preparedness. And kind of what I found in is that one, um, businesses um, are very open for us coming in and helping them out with those particular plans. We've gone to numerous businesses already just in my four and a half months. I've been going to businesses with the fire marshal, Randy Powers. Um, and then we've also visited Foxwood Springs to talk to them about their emergency plans. But more than anything, we've also talked um, to a lot of residents. Um, we've started the Raymore Emergency Management Facebook page um, and a Twitter account just as another avenue to get them information on emergency preparedness. Um, and we've had a really good response. Those have only been going for about two weeks now. Um, and we've had a really good response to both of those social media avenues. Um, we're going to continue to work with residents. As some of you know, we did experience some damage in Stonegate um, just a week ago um, from the storms. And so we were out in that community talking to many of those residents um, about the, the damage that they sustained to their homes and property um, and what they can do to hopefully um, get that repaired. Um, <clears throat> so over the course of the rest of the year, um, the goal of, my age, of our agency is going to be um, to equip the communications trailer, which will be getting back actually tomorrow. Um, and we'll have that out at the different summer uh, festivals, especially the fall festival coming up. Um, and then we'll continue to work on promoting best practices within emergency, emergency preparedness and helping the citizens of Raymore be as prepared as possible for any emergency. So I just wanted to give a quick update and say hello since I hadn't met a lot of people. So, <laughs> Questions of staff? Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. That concludes staff report, sir. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to committee reports. And we had a couple of ribbon cuttings recently on the 3rd of June. Uh, we had a ribbon cutting for the Whole Health Pet Center at uh, 18011 East uh, State Route 58. That's a huge uh, facility just outside of town there and it looks like they can handle darn near anything. And then on the uh, 5th, uh, we had a ribbon cutting at Creative Hands Quilt Shop and Decorative Painting in 1907 West Foxwood Drive. Um, they, uh, it's in the uh, old Mott home, the upper floor of the Mott home, and they have completely, the inside of the thing is amazing how much they have in there. So if you're into uh, quilting or decorative painting, that's a great place to go. And then uh, we tentatively have a ribbon cutting coming up on the 17th for Fearless Dance Center at 104 North Madison, uh, and that will be at 11.30 on the, the uh, 17th. And moving on to the consent agenda, I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the consent agenda as presented to include item A, City Council Minutes from May 12, 2014. Item B, the Hubach Hill Road North Cass Parkway Community Improvement District Board appointments. Item C, the License Tax Review Committee appointment. Item D, the appointment of Dale Jacobson to the TIF Commission. And item E, the acceptance of the Recreation Park Ball Fields Renovation Project. Second. Well, a motion and a second to approve the uh, consent agenda, and I'll recognize that uh, Mr. Jacobson is in the audience. Hi. Um, or, let's see. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And the motion carries unanimously. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's noticeable when we've skipped a meeting. I have to refer to my notes even more often. So we'll move on to unfinished business. We have the second reading of Bill 2962 by title only. The second reading of Bill 2962 by title only, an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, annexing two segments of right of way to the south side of Hubach Hill Road, east of South Wind Estate Subdivision Road, located in Section 25 and Section 26, Township 46 North, Range 32 West, Cass County, Missouri, 
pursuant to section 71.014 of the revised statutes of the state of Missouri. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the second reading of Bill 2962. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2962, the annexation of county right-of-way of Hubach Hill Road. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 2962. Is there any discussion? Uh, Council Member Hubach? I've been reading uh, about this and I'm trying to figure out what we gain as, as the city, what we gain by annexing uh, all this road. The county, I can understand where the county is coming from because they don't have to do any maintenance. We're doing it then. Uh, are we going to get snow removal all the way through on that street? Are we going to end up putting uh, curbs and gutters? so that he looks like the rest of it. Just what are we going to do when we annex? That, that's the question that I have in my mind then is, does that street become like the rest of the city streets once it's annexed? We haven't talked anything about what we were going to do if we would curb it, if we were going to do anything else. So am I missing something here? Well, I, I think you've asked about the curbing, uh, Mr. Berlin. The, uh, annexing the right of road right away does not obligate the council to make any other improvements to the uh, current road. Other discussion? Well, Mr. Mayor, yes. since that is, the two main uh, streets getting us out of Ramo from 291 to 49 Highway, there's either 58 or there's Hubach, those are the two. And I'm wondering about having snow removal all the way through on that so that people can get in and out of town from Ramo, and that's, part of my concern. <coughs> Mr. Berlin? It would, it, we would begin, and I, we, we're already doing it, but we yeah, would okay. remove snow from the entire uh, road right-of-way that's in the city limits. Other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. I'm confirming. D yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Like I said, you skip a week and things get a little hairy. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? One, two, three, four. Nine, six, seven, eight. Motion carries unanimously. And I'll get better as the night goes on. <coughs> we have the second reading of Bill 2964 by title only. The second reading of Bill 2964 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the fiscal year 2011 capital budget. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the second reading of Bill 2964. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2964, the budget amendment for the Ryan Steakhouse access. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Holman? I think I stated my point on this in our first vote. Uh, the only way you don't remember that is if you weren't here. Um, and, and I'm not going to hold it up this time. I'm not going to vote against it. It's a practical move. But this is a public safety issue that is not going to go away. I know the city recognizes that. The staff recognizes that. I simply want to go on record. This is an unacceptable situation. Staff did what they could to do to rectify it. And like I said, just as, as a member, public forum, I want to let people know that we are going to have to address this at some point in some fashion someday. Thank you. Any other discussion? We have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 2964. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion carries unanimously. We have the second reading of Bill 2963 by title only. The second reading of Bill 2963 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the fiscal year 2014 capital budget. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the second reading of Bill 2963. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2963, the budget amendment for the amendment of the 2014 curb program. Second. There is a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 2963. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion carries unanimously. And may we have the second reading of Bill 2965 by title only. The second reading of Bill 2965 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri authorizing the mayor to enter into a contract with R.L. Phillips Construction, Inc. for the West Side Remodeling Project, City Project Number 14-BG-001 in the amount of $26,250 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the second reading of Bill 2965. Mr. Mayor, move that we approve Bill 2965, award of contract for the City Hall West Side Remodel Project. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the second reading of Bill 2965. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Motion carries unanimously. And that takes care of old business. We'll move on to news, new business. And um, we'll have the first reading of Bill 2967 by title only. The first reading of Bill 2967 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, annexing property described as Lot 1 of Willow Hills Subdivision, Section 10, Township 46 North, Range 32 West, Cass County, Missouri, and belonging to Donna M. Sodart, pursuant to Section 71.014 of the Revised Statutes of the State of Missouri. Thank you. The staff report. Thank you, sir. I'll call on Mr. Cataret. Thank you. Uh, Bill 2967 proposes the uh, voluntary annexation of Lot 1 in the Willows, Willow Hill subdivision. Lot 1, uh, the common address for the property is 303 East Gore Road, so this lot is in the <coughs> upper northeast corner uh, of the subdivision. Uh, the Willow Hills subdivision contains a total of 30 lots. It was originally platted in Cass County. Uh, if this annexation is approved, there will be only two lots remaining uh, in the subdivision that are still in the unincorporated part of, of the county. Uh, if the property is annexed, it will retain its current zoning, which is uh, Cass County Rural Residential. Part of the agreement on the annexation that is for the city to then uh, do a city-initiated rezoning to bring this, the property under city zoning, which is rural residential. No change in the zoning um, category for the property other than just having the city designation on it. Uh, the annexation agreement was signed by the applicants included in your packet. Uh, and st staff does recommend the council accept the proposed findings that were included in the staff report and approve the uh, annexation request, the annexation as requested. Thank, Thank you. you. Questions of staff? Councilmember Holman? Mr. Cataret, you mentioned uh, if, if this property were to be annexed in, um, there would re remain two, two properties still in the subdivision. Are those improved and are there occupants on those properties or are they empty lots? They are improved. Uh, they currently uh, are not connected to the city water. That typically is what is bringing the properties into the city. So those two properties improved, but not connected to our city water at this time. Thank you, sir. Other questions for staff? Uh, I'll give the applicant a chance if you want to come up and say anything to the council. <coughs> if not, just stay there and it's fine. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council, and others present. I'm Donna Sudart. Like uh, Mr. Cataret said, 303 score. I've lived there for 37 years um, and am applying to be uh, for voluntary annexation into the city. Um, Councilwoman Hubach has uh, been after us for years <laughs> and years to do this, so uh, I give her a lot of credit for, for me being here. And I'd like to mention my appreciation to Mr. Cataret, who has been very patient with me. Um, I don't know what else to say because my brother is Mr. Military and he always says to his people, if you can't say it in three minutes, don't get started. <laughs> so unless there's any questions, that's all I have Thank to say. You. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> that's a good, good rule, three minute rule. We'll, we'll, we'll employ it up here. <laughs> I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 2967. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2967, the voluntary annexation for Willow Hills, Lot 1. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 2967. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to a public hearing. Uh, this is a uh, liquor license renewal uh, for the freedom stop so I'll open up the public hearing um, by asking for a staff report I suppose <laughs> I'll call on the city clerk thank you Lori O'Malley on behalf of pale enterprises doing business at, as freedom stop at 503 East Walnut has filed an application for her 2014 2015 liquor license and the app applicant has met the requirements of city code and staff recommends approval Approval by a majority of the council is also required. 
and the approval is final subject to approval by the state of Missouri. The applicant is in the audience should council have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to make a statement on her behalf? And keep it to three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. Hey, uh, hi, I'm Lori O'Malley with Payal Enterprise. I'm um, doing business as Freedom Stop 503 East Walnut, Raymore, Missouri. Here to submit my application to the City Council for renewal of our 2014-2015 liquor license. Okay. Well, thank you. Any uh, questions of the applicant? Thank you. I'll uh, open the floor for public comment if anybody would like to come forward. And seeing nobody, I'll close the public hearing and move to dispose of this item. Uh, point, point of order first. On our packet, uh, it says the 2014-2014 liquor license. Is that just a Scrivener's error? Yes, correction was noted. Okay. Thank you. Very good. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I, I move that we approve uh, the 2014-2015 liquor license renewal for Payal Enterprises doing business as Freedom Stop. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, the uh, liquor license renewal. Any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Move on to the first reading of Bill 2966. By title only. The first reading of Bill 2966 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri approving a final plat for Ridgeway Villas at the Legends, a subdivision in Section 17, Township 46 North, Range 32 West, in Raymore, Cass County, Missouri. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, would the applicant like to come forward and present their proposal? Uh, I'll be brief, like <laughs> uh, formerly stipulated. <laughs> Uh, my name is Axel Novion. I'm with Geosource. We're an engineering company. Uh, we're seeking approval of the final plat for this project. And a quick overview of the project. Uh, it's a 56-unit, two-story development consisting of duplexes all the way up to eight plexes, uh, located south of 58 Highway, east of Mott Drive, and west of Scott Drive. Uh, the presented final plat is a replat of part of Lot 4 and all of Lot 5 of the Legends at Raymore. Uh, the plat creates three separate lots and one tract, which includes the stormwater basin. Additionally, an existing storm sewer line and easement are relocated. Uh, this replat reconfigures the internal land, land boundaries to better utilize the space for the proposed development. And that's all I have. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Questions of the applicant? Thank you. Uh, staff report, please. Thank you, sir. I'll call on Mr. Cataret. Thank you. The bill 2966 is the uh, request for the uh, final plat approval for Ridgeway Villas at the Legends, uh, generally the property located south of Cinnabar Drive, along Mott Drive, Scott Drive, and Ridgeway Drive. And as was indicated, this is actually a replat of lots that are, are currently platted within the Legends uh, at Raymore subdivision. Uh, the property proposed for the uh, final plat is currently zoned uh, R3A, which is uh, multiple family residential. These lots have been zoned that way since uh, 2003 when the Legends final plat uh, came forward. And as was indicated, the plat consists of three lots in one tract. I note that the, uh, the plat uh, again, which is a replat, it eliminates a total of 78 individual townhome unit lots. Each uh, of the lots in the Legends plat back in 2003 were platted as individual <coughs> lots. This is a total of 78 of those individual lots being removed as part of this replat. And then the plat before you creates just three large lots with uh, a total of 56 dwelling units uh, spread over, over the three lots. So there's actually a reduction uh, by 22 units uh, with, the, with the approval of this plat. The, uh, as was indicated also, the public infrastructure uh, necessary to serve the lots uh, has been installed. So water, sewer, storm sewer, utilities are currently uh, available uh, within the subdivision for construction of, of, of units on the lots. Uh, the Planning Commission did submit uh, proposed findings of fact for your consideration. Uh, the findings include the fact that the plat is uh, the same, substantially the same as what was uh, initially approved uh, under the preliminary plat. 
The final plat does comply with all the conditions, restrictions, and requirements of our Unified Development Code and all the other applicable ordinances of the city. Uh, and it does comply with the conditions that were attached uh, to the preliminary plat <coughs> approval. The Planning Commission uh, considered the application at its June 3rd meeting. Uh, they did vote 6-0 to accept the findings of fact and for the case, uh, the request for the final plat to the City Council with the recommendation of approval. It was subject to one condition and that being that the final plat drawing that is submitted for recording purposes does need to include uh, a 10-foot utility easement along the west side of lot one and a five-foot utility easement along the north side of a lot. Those are minor changes to the plat that we typically uh, would have uh, corrected when the uh, final version for recording purposes is brought forward. Uh, engineering Division submitted their memorandum regarding the provision of facilities to the lots and uh, at this time, that concludes staff report. And thank you. Any questions of staff? Thank you. Oh. Mr. Mayor, if I could call on the city attorney to uh, discuss the scope of the council's uh, review of this item tonight uh, from a legal standpoint. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Fearborn will hand out a, a handout that the city attorney brought with him. Thank you, Mr. Berlin, Mr. Mayor, and member of the council. I would thought it would be a apropos in light of some of the history that's gone with this project that we review the narrow scope of review that's before the council tonight and that is uh, pursuant to our um, unified development code section 470.130 the three sole factors that are few before you tonight for administrative review are is this final plat substantially the same as the approved preliminary plat does it comply with the conditions and restrictions or requirements of our applicable ordinances and does it comply with any condition attached to the approval of the final plat? Mr. Cataret has testified and presented to you, has the preliminary plat here, and has testified to you that all of those things are met. When that is the case and the instance here, under, under Missouri law and what I've handed to you, your approval of the plat becomes ministerial. That is, once all the requirements of the subdivision regulations have been met, the approving body does not have discretion to deny plat approval. That is, you may disagree now whether this should have multifamily housing, but that was decided in 2003 with the zoning. There was, I recall, a request for tax credit uh, on this property that was denied by, by the council, but they may have achieved this by other means. That's not the issue before the council tonight. And so I did feel it important because of some of the emotion and feelings that had come before on this project that I direct the council to the scope of its legal review and with respect to this item and would be open to any questions but would suggest despite your personal feelings about the project perhaps or the applicants that what you're about is these three factors outlined on page 165 thank you thank you questions of staff council member Stevens I just have one from Joe it just doesn't matter how we vote it says going through no matter what I mean we have no it discretion. certainly matters how you vote what I've indicated is you don't have legislative discretion like you would if this was coming before you for the first time for zoning as to whether or not it's R3 or that was coming whether this was the correct plan. Since those issues were resolved by prior councils and prior issues and this is merely does the final plat meet the requirements and the of our ordinances and, the, and what was represented in the preliminary plat. So we do need an affirmative vote, but no, you don't have the same legislative discretion you have in many other kinds of issues that will come before you, and that's why I thought I should make my special little speech here tonight. Other questions of staff? Yeah, I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 2966. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2966, Ridgeway Villa's final plat. I'll second it. I have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 2966. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Opposition? One, two. The motion carries with a vote of six to two. We move on to the next item. And this is the bill, first reading of Bill 2971 by title only. The first reading of Bill 2971 by title only an ordinance approving a tra transferee agreement between the City of Raymore, Missouri and Ridgeway Villas at the Legends LP. Uh, staff report, please. Uh, thank you, sir. I'll call on Rich Wood with the law firm of Gilmore and Bell, our Special Economic Development Council. Good evening. Good evening. 
the transferee agreement that's on the agenda for your consideration tonight is a fairly routine agreement that is required anytime there's a transfer of a, a property interest within a TIF redevelopment area. It's required under the TIF contract that was entered into several years ago for the Foxwood Village TIF. Uh, the agreement is primarily for the benefit of the city in that it is a, an acknowledgement by the property owner who's buying property within the TIF redevelopment area that they will comply with the requirements of, of, uh, of the TIF in that they will pay pilots subject to, to land use restrictions that were in the TIF contract. Those are really the two primary things that, that we look at um, that we want compliance from property owners on. So again, this is, this is a, a routine agreement that we do anytime there's a property transfer within a, a, a TIF redevelopment area. It's required by the TIF contract. And uh, it's on your agenda for consideration. I'd answer any questions you have. All right, questions? Uh, Council Member Moorhead? Um, it's my understanding that Bill 2966 and 2971 were dealing with the same parties. This, uh, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, this may be a minor technicality, but in light of the um, state statute regarding fictitious name registration, we've got one party, which is Foxwood Plaza Homes LLC. We have a contract here for Foxwood Plaza LLC. That's a completely separate legal entity under Missouri law. be misunderstanding your question but the transferee agreement that's on the agenda is with Foxwood or I'm sorry with uh, Ridgeway Villas at the Legends LP correct I'm, I'm looking at bill 2971 of it do I have the parties wrong it should be between the city and Ridgeway Villas Hopefully the right one. so Ridgeway Villas at the Legends LP is who the party is yes Foxwood Plaza is the current owner of the property who would be selling to Ridgeway Villa. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are you comfortable with that, Council Member? Well, okay, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll look, let you look at it. I think that, it we can have that during the, our discussion. Time. Okay. Uh, Council Member Hubach, I, I think, wanted the floor. I wanted to know if this was uh, like what the uh, previous one was, a ministerial act where we don't have any say-so on it. I mean, where we go, we've already approved the other part. This is the second part of it, so do we need to approve it too? It's without uh, reservation. Is it a ministerial act? Ms. Hubach, uh, the, the, it's not a ministerial act. It's a little bit different standard here. Uh, it's a reasonableness standard. Um, this is a, a contract issue as opposed to uh, what Mr. Willow was describing as your you know, legislative discretion and ministerial discretion. <clears throat> the TIF contract says that you can't unreasonably withhold approval of the transfer. So the, the, the basis of a decision to not approve the transfer would have to be grounded in some belief that the, uh, the proposed new property owner couldn't comply with the requirements of the TIF. In other words, they couldn't make pilot payments or they couldn't comply with the land use restrictions in the TIF contract. Other questions? Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 2971. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2971 transferee agreement with Ridgeway Villas. I'll second it. There's a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 2971. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Moorhead, I'll let you go first. Okay. Um, and since this will be coming for us twice, I'm hoping the uh, city attorney can help me understand this because I'm seeing the Ridgeway Villas final plat. The applicant was one entity, which is, and I'm going back and looking directly at our case, our staff report. The applicant was Jeffrey Myers Foxwood Plaza Homes LLC. But yet, this is a an agree transferee agreement with Ridgeway Villas at the Legends LP. I'd like a little more clarification on that. Uh, th this may help. The, the, way, the way this works is the, the transferee agreement has to be approved before the conveyance can happen. So I believe, and Mr. Willick, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, 
the, the, the current owner would have filed the replatting application because the transfer to the new owner has not yet occurred. One of the steps that, <coughs> that had to happen before that transfer can occur is approval of the transfer agreement tonight. <coughs> As a follow-up then, um, the applicant that was here for Bill 2966 is not going to be the owners? They are not Ridgeway Villas at the Legends LP? Cataract, can you help on that? Councilmember Moorhead, what, what page in the packet are you? Um, I'm on page 176 for the transferee agreement. Um, Thank I'm you. On, on Bill 2966, I am on page 161 of the packet. Okay. That's my question, Mr. Cataract. 61 indicates Foxwood Plaza Homes LLC is the applicant. Foxwood Plaza Homes LLC is the current owner, owner of the land uh, of the, the proposed Ridgeway Villas plat. They, they are the current title holder to the land. And so was the application filed by the applicant Ridgeway jointly or with the owner's consent or how did you receive it? With the owner's consent. Does that help? Well, no, actually, because again, since I saw these as two companion pieces, so what we're saying is that the current property owners who got the final plat approved, and then now they are transferring it to a new owner to complete a transferee agreement for a TIF district, is that what I'm understanding? Yeah, I think that's correct, which is the current owner and applicant are the ones with standing to well the applicant can jointly with the owner apply for the plat approval they then they intend the use and uh, the transferee agreement will, will make them subject to the tiff agreement as they become owner in lieu of the person that was originally under the tiff agreement the applicant may be able to clarify who these two entities are with respect to ridgeway villas at the legends lp i considered those the, the true applicant for both because they want to become the ultimate owner who wants the final plat and they want this transfer agreement. Mr. Foster. All right, you'll have to use the mic. And I have to use the mic too. You'll have to use the mic. Everybody's confused, so I'll try and shed some light. I'm Stuart Foster with Realty Assets. I represent the property and the owner on the sale of the property. The property was bought by Jeff Myers as Foxwood Plaza, LLC. Then the residential portion, because there's a commercial portion surrounding Culver's and to the east of Mont Drive. The commercial portion was separated from the residential portion and the residential portion was put into Foxwood Plaza Homes, LLC, which is what the only portion that's being sold to the applicant, Ridgeway Villas. Because the water retention for both commercial and residential is on lot nine, and which qualifies for TIF funding to maintain it, there has to be a transfer agreement. Foxwood Plaza Homes is selling the residential portion to Ridgeway Villas, and the only part of the TIF that's involved is what maintains the water retention. <coughs> but by law, there has to be a transfer agreement acknowledging the new owner. <laughs> Does that help? Uh, uh, it's perfectly clear we are going to have a new owner suddenly appear at the last minute. So, okay. Uh, Councilmember Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm kind of concerned, and I'll, I'll question this right out. You, Mr. Stewart, you, you said that the retention pond is maintained by the, the TIF contract. It, and I, I remember those back in those days that there was a, a SID passed also that took care of the maintenance of the area. And at that time, I believe all of that area was was encompassed in that SID, or am I incorrect? Uh, I just want to make sure that that the funds we're talking about are able to or, or were originally coming from the TIF and not the SID. Am Joe would have to answer that. I know that those commingle, the TIF and the SID mm -hmm. commingle until the TIF bonds are paid off. The SID money and the TIF money both commingle until you pay off the TIF portion. The Ridgeway Villas 
produces no money into the TIF and is eligible to receive no money out of the TIF or the CID, N neither one. But because they will become the owner of the common area that has part of the water retention on it, there has to be agreement that the TIF, because it also serves all those commercial lots, will continue to maintain it. That's all it's about. I don't know if I'm answering your question or not. Why don't we let Special Finance Council Wood address your question, Councilman Kelly? that the, uh, the subject property that we're talking about, the, the stormwater, is within both the TIF and the CID. The uh, stormwater project was, it was to be reimbursed with CID revenues, not TIF revenues. As Mr. Wood had indicated, uh, the, the funds that go for the maintenance of the CID are, would be what would you be used on the very back end of the project if there were any maintenance costs that had been incurred and turned in. Uh, the TIF monies, uh, the, the other thing with this is there will be a tax increment that is collected off of this that is different that will go into the special allocation fund. but. Those monies are not, there is nothing within the Ridgeway Villas project that allows those monies to funnel back to them through the TIF special allocation fund. In other words, there will be payment of revenue associated with the TIF from the project, but they will not receive any money back. Other questions of staff? Or let's see, we were in discussion actually, weren't we? Other discussion? Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 2971. All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In opposition? And one op uh, in opposition. A first reading of Bill 2971 uh, passes. And let's go on to the first reading of Bill 2974 by title only. The first reading of Bill 2974 by title only an ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Will Pave, Inc. for the Roadside Trail Rehabilitation Project, City Project Number 14-196-201, in the amount of $184,427.72, and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. Uh, staff report, please. Thank you, sir. I'll call Mr. Krauss. Thank you, Mr. Berlin, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. The uh, fiscal year 2014 capital budget included $200,000 for rehabilitation of our roadside trail network. Uh, staff conducted an assessment of the roadside trails and identified the following work that is included in this contract. Uh, reconstruction of the Fox Ridge, Fox Ridge Drive Trail from 58 Highway to Johnson Drive. Reconstruction of the Dean Avenue Trail from Lucy Webb Road to Indian Grass Way. And isolated patch repairs to the trails along North Madison, Lucy Webb, and South Madison Street. We do recommend award of the contract to the low bidder, Will Pave Inc. Questions of staff? Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 2974. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2974, the award of contract for the roadside trail rehabilitation. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 2974. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion carries unanimously. Move on to item F, Bill 2968. May we have the first reading of Bill 2968 by title only? The first reading of Bill 2968 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri approving an agreement with Credit Control LLC to provide bad debt collection services for the city. Thank you. Staff report? Thank you, sir. 
Uh, the city contracts with an outside agency to perform collection services for uh, outstanding delinquent utility accounts. Uh, firms providing these services typically charge by taking a percentage of the collections they are able to retrieve uh, for the city. Uh, city staff recently issued an RFP uh, for firms to provide pricing for a one-year period with the ability to renew for two additional one-year periods. Three firms responded to that RFP. Uh, we are recommending that City Council award the contract to Credit Control LLC. That's our current vendor. Uh, Credit Control LLC was determined to be the lowest and best respondent to this proposal. Thank you. Questions of staff? Councilmember uh, Yearbach? I was wondering why now are we deciding to do this? Has it just suddenly had a spate of uh, delinquents? No, ma'am. It's just the it's just the end of the three last three year period, and so it was time for this one to be put out again on the street, uh, just as. Okay, and there's no one near in the area because uh, this is in what Hazelwood, St. Louis area. Is there anyone closer in the Raymore area that does this kind of work? These were the firms that responded. Okay. Other questions of staff, uh, Councilmember Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Do we have the ability uh, under this qu contract to automatically? extend for a period of, of either one, two, or however many years? Or is this just something that every three years we're going to go through? We typically do this every three years unless there's a, a problem after one or two years, in which case we'd bring it back to council. But if everything's running along smoothly, then it would be automatically renewed unless one part or the other decided to uh, not renew. Other questions to staff? Council Member Huba? Yeah, another question, as I understand it, is you like utility bills that aren't being paid for, something like that. If they don't pay for it, as I understand Missouri law, you come back on the owner of the property. So then does the owner of the property get the, uh, uh, the bad debt collection notice then? Is that the way it works? Yes, ma'am. So if I had a piece of property, any of us here had a piece of property and they defaulted, then they, we would be, that they would go against our credit ratings then? Well, well. I mean, before you get started on something like this, I want to know exactly what we're getting into because if, um, if, a, if a landowner can be held responsible for a tenant's debt, then that goes, would, wouldn't that go against their credit rating then when they would show that they were delinquent on paying their bills? I, I imagine it would, but what all this is about is us trying to get what we can from a party from whom we have not been able to collect and the collection agency so goes again, tries to collect what they can and then we, they get a percentage and we get the rest. Okay, and, and so you've, uh, try, you've already, on the trying to collect, you've already tried the, the owner of the property as well as yes. the tenant then? Thank you. Th this is a last resort, Ms. Hubach. There's shut off of utilities, and there's direct contact made to the tenant and owner before it would go into this process. This is after those right. things have occurred and the bill's now outstanding. Right. The city trying to make some effort to collect its delinquent utilities. Exactly. Other questions? Uh, Councilmember Wesco? Do we put liens on the property uh, bef before this or, or after this point? If if we cannot collect from them any uh, the, the any portion of the utility bill, we can put a lien onto the property. And once a year in September, though we have a timing issue with that, but once a year in September, all past due bills that do have the lien go down there. But it is still difficult if people have moved. Uh, as an example, right now we have uh, approximately 182,952 in late bills of which the current delinquent company, and just to address something, Council Member Hubach, this isn't a new program. That we're just simply renewing a three-year contract here. Um, but they, they estimate that about $50,000 worth of that delinquent account is hot. They'll be able to get it. Council Member Wesco? If we can't collect 100%, uh, you know, let's say that the, the, the collection agency is only going to collect 50%. Do we still put a lien uh, for the remainder uh, on, the, on the property? If we can find them, yes, we do. Now, the problem is if they've moved, if it's a tenant issue, because we will not attack the credit rating of, say, a landlord if, because their tenant did not pay. So 
if they've moved and we can't find them, which is commonly the case, it's very difficult to make the collection. So is that, is that the challenge with the, the uh, balances that are outstanding? Is that where most of it's coming from? Is um, It's not owners of the property. It's actually people who are renting or they've been sublet. Yes. Other questions of staff? For example, Councilmember nope. Westcott, in large commercial accounts, the staff and I have looked at the difficult procedure of perhaps cutting people off when they've had negotiations and almost brought them to you where we thought there would be substantial public impact or whatever you would be notified. So we do it on a case-by-case -case basis. I would say, by and large, Jim, these are tenants are smaller amounts that are not going after the collection agency is much more efficient at collecting than a your normal legal basis. Councilmember Moorhead, did you have a question of staff? Yeah. So, Mr. Fairborn, so, so, to, so we can understand the process here. Um, if we no longer can collect a debt, we turn this account over to this third party company. If this third party company is unsuccessful, they turn that back to us and then we can continue on with whatever legal method we have available to us at that time. That is correct. And then at some point in time, which the council will actually be seeing in the next several meetings, we simply have to write off the debt. If we have not, if it's not collectible through a lien process with the county, we have to write off the debt and you will be seeing bad debt write off in the next month. All right, one more questions to staff. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 2968. Mr. Mayor, move that we approve Bill 2968, the award of contract for the collection of delinquent accounts. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 2968. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four. Motion carries unanimously. And I'm getting back into the stride of running a meeting, and the <coughs> next item has two bills under the one letter. So, you know, I, I was going good there for the longest time, but I'll, I think I'll be able to handle it. Yeah, the first reading of Bill 2972 by title only. The first reading of Bill 2972 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Vance Brothers, Inc. for the 2014 microsurface project, city project number 14-191-202 in the amount of $131,932.88 and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. No staff report, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. I thought my last meeting would be a good time to throw you a curveball. <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Well played. Uh, it, the reason we did so is that uh, in, in its 2014 capital budget, the City Council approved expenditures of $500,000 for this year's street maintenance work. Uh, we did this bid this out as two different contracts. Uh, and those two contracts, uh, which are before, before you for approval, this one and the next one, total $366,000. And just wanted to make that that clear as we were presenting these two contracts. Uh, so to present so the staff report on the microsurfacing award of contract, I will call on Mr. Crass. Thank you, Mr. Berlin, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. As Mr. Berlin indicated, we broke uh, this year's program into uh, two components. The reason for that is the uh, contractors that are available to do microsurfacing work, uh, there's very few of them and over the last um, several years they've actually been subcontracting with the uh, contractors that are doing the mill and overlay and the other portions of the work. Uh, so what we, um, what we took a look at and was talking with the contractors, by breaking out the microsurfacing specifically, we realized the cost savings with the, with the project. Mm -hmm. So we do recommend award uh, to the uh, low bidder, uh, Vance Brothers, in the amount of $131,932.88. Questions to staff? <laughs> Councilmember Holman. I've got a couple. Uh, I'm going to show my ignorance. I understand general surfacing and complete road bed rebuild. Can you generally explain the microsurfacing difference? Microsurfacing is um, sometimes referred to also as a as a thin lift overlay. It's a okay. it's polymerized asphalt with an with an aggregate uh, mixed in that is applied to the to the surface. It does not uh, provide a, a structural improvement, but it does. Uh, provide ride, uh, it fills in the smaller cracks. It also provides durability and some traction because a lot of the streets we are we are working on, surface asphalt has oxidized off and then the aggregate is, has become polished. So this provides a new um, new surface for the asphalt. I had one more if you don't mind, Mr. Mayor. Please. Um, I, I was kind of reading through the details of the work to be performed in the contract and it talks about them doing 
temporary striping. Is, is that correct? They do some temporary striping yes. as part of the project. And then I assume that we take over some and type of well, striping. They, they temporary stripe and final stripe. I, I'm sorry. They will temporary stripe and then final stripe. Okay, and then we take over, we have some type of maintenance that. beyond that. All right, thank you. Other questions of staff? Thank you. I entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 2972. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2972, the award of contract for microsurfacing. Second. I have a motion to the second to approve the first reading of Bill 2972. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Two, three, four. Motion carries unanimously. All right. May we have the first reading of Bill 2973 by title only? The first reading of Bill 2973 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, authorizing the mayor to enter into an agreement with Phillips Paving Company, Inc. for the 2014 Street Preservation Project, City Project Number 14-191-201, in the amount of $234,091.25, and authorizing the city manager to approve change orders within established budget constraints. And thank you. Staff report, please. Uh, thank you, sir. I'll call Mr. Crass. Thank you, Mr. Berlin, um, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, this contract contains um, crack sealing, mill and overlay, and patching uh, for the streets. This is the particular streets we're going to be working on are outlined on our council memo. I do want to also point out that this does include uh, some work on Southwind Drive. The work we're going to be doing there is to be milling up the existing asphalt and, uh, asphalt, uh, and chip seal surface that is there. Uh, stabilizing the base and then doing a double chip seal surface similar to what we did on Lucy Webb Road and Prairie Lane a few years ago. Uh, we feel that that for this low volume road that is an appropriate reconstruction method. We do recommend approval of the contract to the low bidder Phillips Paving. Thank you. Questions of staff? Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 2973. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2973, the award of contract for the street preservation. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 2973. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to item H, Bill 2969. May the first reading of Bill 2969 by title only. The first reading of Bill 2969 by title only. An ordinance of the City of Raymore, Missouri, amending the City Code, Section 110.165A regarding election results at the first regular meeting after the April election of mayor and council members in order to bring the city code into conformance with the city charter. And thank you. And the staff report, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, an inconsistency has been discovered between the city charter and the city code. Uh, charter section 9.3 provides that the council shall declare the results of municipal elections. Uh, city code section 110.165A provides that council shall pass an ordinance certifying uh, the results of municipal elections. Uh, the charter supersedes the code. Uh, in addition, uh, the county clerk, as the election authority, is responsible for certifying election results. Uh, therefore, for those reasons, we are bringing forth for your consideration a simple amendment to the code changing the word certifying to declaring in section 110.165A. Thank you. And questions of staff? Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of the first reading of Bill 2969. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve Bill 2969, the code amendment certifying election results. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the first reading of Bill 2969. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Kubach? There's a little bit more that needs to be done on this particular um, issue, one, which is section uh, 165. But I will settle for this with the understanding that when we had our retreat, I believe, Mr. Mayor, you said that there were several items that might, in the um, municipal code, we might want to bring up for discussion, and this might be one of them. But I will go ahead and take a half a loaf rather than a whole loaf right now. Other discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion carries unanimously. And we'll skip the last item. <laughs> <laughs> oh, touche, touche. Yeah, the uh, reading of Resolution 1435. The reading of Resolution 14-35 by title only. A resolution of the City of Raymore, Missouri, appointing Jim Fearborn as acting city manager. Uh, staff report? 
Thanks, sir. Uh, vacancy will exist in the position of city manager as of Thursday, June 12th, 2014, uh, before the city council for approval as a resolution appointing Jim Furborn as acting city manager until a new city manager has been appointed by the council. Thank you. Questions of staff? Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to dispose of resolution 1435. Mr. Mayor, move that we approve resolution 1435, the appointment of Jim Fearborn as acting city manager. Second. A motion and a second to approve resolution 1435. Is there any discussion? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Motion carries unanimously. And that con concludes new business. Uh, we're into public comments. If anybody in the audience would like to get up and uh, make a comment, please keep your uh, identify yourself and keep your comments to what, the new standard, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing no one, I'll close the public comments and move to my handy dandy sheet of randomly listed council members. This evening, we will begin the mayor council communication with council member Boehner. <laughs> I'm surprised, but I don't have any comment this evening. Oh, the, the opportunity to go first and just slip through your fingers. Councilmember Stevens, you're up next. No comments tonight. Councilmember Hubach. Yes, at, at our retreat uh, several weeks ago, we talked about uh, striping on the, uh, the city streets and how we would like for it to be a little bit um, different so it's easier for all of us to see. What I would like to have the, the group, the council recommend to Public Works, that they look into seeing some options that we might have so that we can have better striping. I know that they talked about the cost, but sometimes the cost is very small compared to the results. And if the rest of the council agrees, I would like to see us get started on uh, doing that so we can have it in time for the budget. Thank you, Councilmember Hubach. Councilmember Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to acknowledge Mr. Dale, Dale Jacobson in the audience tonight. Congratulations on the uh, appointment to TIF Commission and thank you for the willingness to serve. That's all I got. Thank you. Councilmember of Delgawan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just real quick, I want to say thanks to Eric for his years of ser service with the city of Raymore. Um, we we're glad to have you for so many years and welcome Mr. Fearborn to his new position. Um, just repeating the Arts in the Park, June 21st. We heard from Parks and Rec at the beginning from 10 to 4 at the Farmer's Market Park. And I also want to remind everybody this Friday, June 13th, is Relay for Life from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. It's not too late to sign up. You can come down Friday evening to the Ray Peck Stadium, the football stadium down by the high school, and register the night of the event. All of the proceeds go to the American Cancer Society, and it's a very fun event to get your team together and take turns walking around the track. Um, lots of fun activities for kids and families during the event, and again, supports a very worthy cause, the American Cancer Society. So if you don't have plans on Friday night, come on down to the stadium from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and us old folks don't stay that late, but the kids usually stay all night. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Councilmember Moorhead? I will try to be brief. Uh, the three minutes is going to push the, push me here. Um, you know, for me, this has been a number of weeks since we've been here, so, um, you know, I've had an opportunity to really appreciate how people intersect with each other's lives. Uh, first of all, going back to May and the, the wonderful event we had out in front of City Hall honoring fallen officers uh, who make a commitment to us. Uh, I, I'm always reminded of the fact that uh, I'm told to run away from problems, but they run toward them and, and they do a wonderful service for us and deserve that recognition and do make an impact in our lives. In addition, uh, Mr. Berlin, uh, you know, you, you've been here a long time and your impact and your involvement in our community is felt and seen in a lot of little subtle ways. Um, you made the comment about how hard the staff works and to me that's because of your strong consistent management. And so you will be missed and uh, appreciate all your service. Um, I wanna say that I had an opportunity to celebrate the uh, citizen here in Raymore this week, uh, Joel Nelson, who was in, ordained 50 years ago um, and so all the lives he's touched, um, including my baptism and uh, the funeral of my brother. 
uh, one of the greatest joys I experienced this week was the Silver Lake uh, Fishing Derby. Um, nothing sweeter than to see uh, two girls between the ages of six and eight uh, catching 14 fish in one hour. Um, <laughs> incredible, but there's nothing sweeter than to hear a child laugh. Uh, although the fish weren't really laughing, they were terrorized, but uh, these were, uh, it was wonderful to see these children. And I want to welcome into the family the Sotarts. It was wonderful that they've been able to join us um, and uh, we embrace them in our family. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember uh, Holman. Uh, just two things. Uh, one, I uh, concur with and echo Councilmember Hubach's comments on striping. I really think that we should look at uh, pursuing a, a more robust striping program uh, as part of our street maintenance, and, and I would certainly be interested in that. I know there were some other interests from the council uh, at the retreat as well. And uh, Mr. Berlin, I wish you well in your future endeavors. Um, I, I would echo Councilmember Moorhead's comments. I think your, uh, your tenure here has uh, uh, well served the city, um, and, and we certainly see the effects of the time that you've been here and the growth of the city and the great quality of life that we have. Thank you, sir. And Councilmember Westcote. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you know, I too want to thank uh, Dale Jacobson for his willingness to serve. Uh, you know, it seems that we've, we've had a, uh, a challenge or a drought of willing applicants uh, to sign up on board. So I encourage everybody to go out and look to see uh, what vacancies are available. There are a few. Uh, I also want to thank Eric for his service. Uh, even though we haven't always seen eye to eye, uh, I think for the, the majority of the three and a half years that I have served, it, that it has been an honor to serve with you, and, and so thank you for your service. Uh, and lastly, you know, I, I think it's, it, it was noticeable that I voted against uh, a, a couple issues tonight, and I didn't speak out against it then, uh, but I will share about it now. Um, I was uh, strongly opposed to the financing mechanism uh, to which that organization and, and that project um, is utilizing. Um, I think it's extremely unfortunate uh, that our Missouri uh, Housing Development Corporation uh, chose to to fund um, a development here in Raymore with a with a, a, a project or with money that is actually designed to encourage development in blighted areas. Um, you know, when you look it up and, and you look at the history of the, pro the uh, program and the projects. You know, you see areas in urban cores uh, of Kansas City, of Detroit, of, um, you know, of New York City, uh, you know, which is what that program was uh, designed to do, was to encourage development in those areas, which Raymore, you know, does not fall within those areas. Um, utilization of that project uh, also uh, provides an unfair advantage uh, to those organizations that use it, as opposed to the ones who come in and actually pay market rate to develop housing and to develop the projects um, within Raymore. So again, I, th I think it's extremely unfortunate that the MHDC uh, chose to award that. Thank you. Uh, I've got a couple of notes. In the first set of notes, I'm gonna ask the city manager to, to make sure that I get everything captured correctly from the meeting that we had earlier today. Uh, earlier today, uh, Matt, Killian, a uh, district engineer with MoDOT was out and met with uh, City Manager Berlin, uh, Assistant City Manager Fearborn, uh, Director of Economic Development Thompson, and City Engineer Kraus and I uh, talk about the, the proposed three-quarter cent sales tax uh, that's going to be on the uh, August ballot. Uh, specifically, he wanted to share with us uh, how much revenue they were thinking that it would generate uh, and um, what sort of money would come to this area of Cass County. Uh, he, the engineer said that it would generate $5.4 billion over 10 years. It would bring $131,000 yearly to Raymore. Um, okay, I'm getting a nod that that's, that's correct. Um, and bring in uh, $335,000 a year to the county, and this would be money that could be used uh, for uh, roads and, and that sort of stuff. Uh, he went on to say that the specific projects that would be uh, awarded will be announced on Wednesday. Um, the I-49-58 interchange is on that list about midway through the 10-year period. Uh, they would re take that 58 interchange uh, with 7149 and uh, improve it so that traffic could flow. 
Uh, he was hesitant to say exactly what kinds of improvements uh, because they're still doing some engineering work. Uh, and also there would be uh, uh, 500 million dollars set aside to improve I-70 uh, to six lanes. Um, they have this information out on their website and I'll, I'll give their website. It's uh, www.modot.org uh, forward slash moving forward. Uh, if you go out to MoDOT, you can find your way to that. And, and hopefully on Wednesday morning, that's where they'll have the uh, projects listed. Did I capture that meeting or did I miss anything in there? No, sir. That was the gist of it. Okay. Thank you. It was a quick meeting and it was an inform inf informational meeting. So uh, next thing I've got here is uh, a uh, weather-related emergencies uh, document uh, plans uh, from four class groups, uh, Ms. Uh, Marlotz, Newkirk, Ramirez, and Copenhager uh, had their students draw up some weather emergency plans and uh, presented it to, uh, to me and to uh, Mur Director uh, Murdoch and uh, uh, Superintendent Monsis was there also. And they also made uh, four presentations and I'd like to make two comments. First. I think every one of the students spelled my last name correctly. That is amazing. Second, some of their penmanship is great. Oh, and I should mention, these are third graders. And finally, uh, on their presentations, they had, uh, uh, was it four? Th four presentations, wasn't it? They had four presentations with slides and music and stuff like that. Uh, I will be passing this off to the chief uh, so that you could read through it and see if there's anything we can glean from it on weather-related emergencies. Uh, there are comments that you should talk to your mom and dad. I, we, we might want to modify that just a little bit. Uh, but but it, was, it was a great presentation. Uh, the, uh, it, it is really cool to see uh, just how bright uh, third graders are. And finally, uh, Mr. Berlin, uh, it's, it's been a, a great run here. You've been involved with some of the uh, fastest growing parts of Raymore. Uh, you've done a lot of work when things get slow, slowed down a little bit so we could focus on other things and I really appreciate that. Uh, you're leaving a, a well-developed staff uh, that I'm sure will be able to carry on as we begin a hunt uh, for somebody to fill your absolutely large shoes. So, uh, congratulations on your move. Um, Raymore will still be here uh, you know, five years from now when you decide to you know, cool your heels and, heels and come on back. So. Uh, we do not have reason to go into executive session, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. Oh, sorry. Just one point of reflection uh, was brought up by Mr. Kennedy. The Walter Buck Fishing Tournament, for those of you that are new to town, uh, Mr. Kennedy himself hasn't been here that long. Chief Buck was, was Chief of Police here in Raymore, and I'm sure Chief Zimmerman at her time with Kansas City knew Chief Buck uh, about two or three police chiefs ago, if I remember correctly. And they kind of had a reputation among law enforcement and others in the community as kind of the Andy Griffith uh, sheriff of the police chiefs. He liked to spend his off time uh, at Silver Lake and different places fishing. And that's where the history of that uh, fishing tournament came from. I just thought that would be interesting to note if you're not familiar with that. You know, I've been in Raymore for 20 years and I remember Chief Buck and, and worked over Belton at that time. And so just kind of a, a, a good story to remember that we can, we've continued that legacy for quite some time since, since Chief's passing. And I just want to bring that up, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Mayor, move that we adjourn our June 9th, 2014 City Council meeting. Second. We have a motion to the second to adjourn. All in favor? We're in adjournment. Thank you.